Hello, it's Dorian. Thank you for tuning into Dot Slash. Today I have for you the Pop OS 21.04 beta preview featuring the Cosmic Desktop, which is due to be out in June. Now, this isn't a hack that I did to get the unstable repos activated and then updated to get the very latest unstable packages. The good folks at System76 actually sent me this beta preview ISO so that I can actually test it out and install it. And so now I can actually go ahead and show you what they're working on up to this point and go over all the different features of the new Cosmic Desktop. The installation went great. I've put it on hardware, put it on a USB stick, the installation process is awesome. It's smooth. I love their installer. Part of the install option also gives you the option to encrypt your disk with a password, which means you will have to enter your password every time you boot up. I opted not to do it for this one. One thing I like about Pop! OS is on their website, when you click download, you're presented with two options. So the regular download link is for Intel and AMD graphics, and the second one comes bundled with the NVIDIA drivers already installed. So this is handy if you have NVIDIA graphics because you don't have to install the operating system and then mess around with trying to install the drivers. It's installed right off the bat and ready to go. So before getting into all the settings and the new features, I first want to just quickly show you the extensions here. This is how they create their desktop on top of GNOME 3.38.5, which will likely be a newer version once it's released in June. But if you're not aware, GNOME has a feature called extensions where you can modify the appearance and the behavior by adding in various extensions. And that's what they've done here. So they've added their own extensions in here that modify how GNOME works. So the great thing about Cosmic here is that they've listened to their customers. They've realized that a lot of people use docs, either dash to dock or dash to panel. So they've added this dock here at the bottom, which you can see and it's being fully integrated into the entire desktop experience here. Another thing I very much enjoy is their tiling feature. Now, there are tiling window managers out there, but some people are not a fan of committing to a tiling window manager 100%, but might like how you can tile sometimes. So this gives you maximum flexibility. This is what Cosmic is all about. So the tiling feature is pretty easy to use. You can just go here and turn it on or you can also toggle it with super key and the Y key. So now you can see the window is full screen and if you open any other additional windows, it will stack them. And you'll notice here that there are gaps. This is similar to i3 gaps. If you click here though, you can actually remove the gaps or make them larger. So again, you're given the option to have it or not have it, it's up to you. And if you like a tiling window manager because of the keyboard shortcuts, those are still here. So if you hold the windows key, you can go around and select which window you want to be in focus. And then if you were to hit super key enter, you've now selected that window to be moved or resized. And then you can use the arrow keys to move it around wherever you want, hit enter and drop it. If you like tiling, but you're not that into the keyboard shortcuts, you can still just drag them around. You can see this highlighted area gives you a hint of where it's gonna go. So if I want the settings and the file manager to take up this side, just drop it there. And then there you go. Drop it back over here, down here, or on onto the side like that. And you can also stack them. So now this gives you a tab on top where you have your different stacked windows and you can just drag it off and drop it somewhere else and it unstacks them. Also at any time, you can just hit super key G to float a specific window, the rest will stay tiled, and then super key G to undo it. I put a link in the description that has all the keyboard shortcuts, so you can check that out, but that is tiling, which isn't new, but I think this is fantastic because if you want to try tiling, if you like it, but not always, this is awesome because you don't have to switch desktop environments if you wanna switch from tiling to floating, you just go ahead and just turn this on and off. Now, another thing you'll notice is the dock takes up a lot of room here. So the idea of having a tiling window manager is to maximize your screen space, your real estate, but the dock has an option to hide or auto hide. And I'll go over that in the settings now. So in the GNOME settings, if you scroll up, there is a desktop section. 
These are all new settings for Cosmic. First one being background, and they've got some nice backgrounds. I'm not going to go over every single one, but they've got some cool ones, a lot of sci-fi ones. But let's move on to desktop. So here we define what the super key does. Right now it is launcher. This is a new launcher. So I'll show you here, I hit super and this pops up. Normally with GNOME, you get the full screen application. But what they've done here is they've created a smaller applications launcher where you could just start typing what you want, hit enter and open it up. Another thing it does is if you hit the super key, you can just use the up and down arrows or control one, control two to select which window that is already open you want to highlight. The next setting you can do with the super key is to open workspaces. Workspaces are like multiple virtual desktops if you're not aware. You can also hit the workspaces area in the top left here on the top bar or down on the dock, show workspaces does the same thing. But if you have this set, then your super key will open this as well. I'll go over workspaces a little more when I get to those settings, but they're pretty easy to manage, drag and drop. There's also keyboard shortcuts, which I will again go over. And then the last setting for that is applications, which is the classic GNOME applications menu, full screen. You can type in here as well, but I really do like the new mini launcher. So then we have hot corners. You can see they're all marked to do. As they told me when they sent me the ISO, it's not fully complete yet. Like it's not due to be released in June. So there are some things that they're still working on. There might be a few glitches, but I haven't encountered any yet. But basically you can open either workspaces or applications by just putting the mouse up in the top left corner. Next, you have options for the top bar. So you have the show workspaces button and applications button. These are these two right here. So workspaces, applications, these are the same as on the dock, workspaces, applications. So if you don't want both, you can just turn these off and then use the ones on the dock or the keyboard shortcuts. But if you want to leave them there, you can also get rid of these on the dock, which I'll get to later. The date and time at the top here, you can move it to the right or left or leave it centered. And you can select to show this top bar only on the primary or on all displays if you have multiple monitors. I only have one, so I can't test that out, but I see here it says to do, so perhaps this is still being worked on. The next section here is the window control. So I like this because normally I would install GNOME tweaks so that you can turn off showing the minimize button or showing the maximize button. So I like that this is just included in the settings right off the bat. Appearance is something very common in all operating systems now is to have a light and dark theme. And then we have the dock settings. This is the dock at the bottom here. Now, if you're using it in tiling window mode, you might want to just turn this off so that you don't see it at all and you can maximize your screen's real estate. I will, however, leave it on. And then the next option, very much like the top bar, is to show the dock on your primary display or all displays. You can also set it to automatically hide the dock. So it will normally show it unless you have a full screen window and then it'll hide it. And then you can just bring your mouse down for it to pop up and open something else. And as soon as you don't have any full screen windows, it will show up again. I'll turn that off and extend dock to the edges of the screen. If you turn this off, it turns it into a little floating dock, which looks very nice. And then these next settings are what I was talking about earlier, how you can hide these, the launcher, show workspaces, show applications. Now they're all marked to do, so this will be something coming in the future. So you can get rid of these if you want to and just use the two up here or just stick to only keyboard shortcuts dock size is something very nice also to be included so this might be a little large for some you can go ahead and shrink it down if you have a high resolution screen you can just make it large or if the small isn't small enough you can go to custom and you could shrink it down even more i'll just leave it at medium and then the next setting is the position so you want it on the bottom left right just like most docs, which is again, very handy to have all these settings in one spot. Next section is workspaces, which is also very nice to have all in this one little area here. Now the default is dynamic workspaces, which means when you put something in the next workspace, it will create an additional empty one. And then when you take something away from that one, it will get rid of the empty one or I should say the second empty one. So you always have one empty one to put something in and it will create and remove them as required. To me, this is the best setting, but if you for some reason wanna have a fixed amount of workspaces, you could do that as well. 
and multi-monitor behavior is all showing to do so can't go over this same with the placement of the workspace picker it looks like they're planning on making it an option where you want it to be on the screen instead of just on the left so that'll be nice so now speaking of workspaces if you're not aware you can also do everything by keyboard so if you want to switch workspaces you just do control super down and it brings you down to the next workspace Control super up brings you back. And if I want to move a window into the next workspace, I can just do shift super down. And now I've moved into the next workspace, as you can see, and I brought the terminal with me, the highlighted application. I brought it with me to the next workspace. So I can do that here as well. I want to move this down, so shift super down. Now I'm in the second workspace, shift super down. Now I'm in a third workspace. You don't have to use the mouse here. I'm just showing you where all the different windows have moved. So I can go ahead and move this back to the first one, go back down here, move this back up there. Pretty easy, pretty flexible. You can also do this in the tiling mode. So with all these options, you have this flexible dock, the tiling, the workspaces using the mouse or the keyboard. This is like ultimate flexibility here. And I really, really like the option that you can just turn tiling on and off without having to install a tiling window manager. In a conversation I had with the CEO of System76, Carl Rochelle, I mentioned how I like the flexibility of using tiling window managers if you want and being able to turn it on and off on the fly. And his reply was, that's our product development style bring advanced but accessible opt-in features. With careful consideration, it can be done without overwhelming users. And I think this is a really great quote, and this is something that they've definitely accomplished here. As I've said a few times, uh, ultimate flexibility. So we can go ahead and just hide the dock, turn this to tiling, and then we've got a tiling window manager taking full advantage of all the screen real estate here, and I can do full keyboard shortcuts if I want. So as I mentioned before, this will be available in June, so keep an eye out for that. But another thing I want to mention about Pop! OS is their wonderful Pop! Shop. It's just clean, it's nice to look at, easy to use, but one thing that I really like is how they've handled certain applications that are available as a flat pack. You can see in the drop down here, you have the option to install Steam, for example, as a flat pack or as a dev file. Typically in other package managers, you'll have an application show up twice in the listings. So one is the regular install, one is the flatback install. But what they've done is they've gone ahead and given you the option within a single listing, which really cleans it up nice. So there are several other features that are gonna finish up here once it's released in June. I'm really looking forward to seeing the final product. It's been stable for me so far. I haven't had any issues. The installation went smooth. Everything worked right out of the box. I didn't have to mess around with anything. So keep an eye out for this, guys. It's going to be a good one. Don't forget, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications for more videos on upcoming distro releases, as well as how to do things in Linux and how things in Linux work. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to contribute to my channel, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash. Until next time, bash on.